So rather than worrying over your situation, you ought to be asking the thought, now since I'm in this situation, however bad it is, intrinsically bad and difficult, what does your purpose of allowing me to be in this situation? Uh, the lesson that you're trying to teach me. Uh, the lesson I need to learn, that is the experience that I need to have. So fix my mind and my heart on you and not my situation. Help me to see you as the problem solver and not the problem itself. Get up and point your finger in your trouble seat and say you're not going to do with me and you're not going to laugh no more than with God. And even if we don't come out of the fire and fun, we still have about bow down. You're in darkness. You're unrest. Am I helping somebody in this place? Get up! Get up! I've had enough difficulties of my own. I don't need to see your long face and your troubled looking. But no, 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 no. We are, what it says here, thanks be to God, He gives us the victory. No matter what our circumstances or situations are, God has already given us the victory. Let us not be weary in well doing, for in due season, God says that you shall reap up your fat now. Oh, he said, well, we are more than conquerors through him who loved us in Christ Jesus. No, I have no debt, no thank, brother, no thank you, Nothing shall separate us from the love of God. You're dependent on a song to make you happy, feel good. It's going to be short lived because sooner or later, the supply directors are going to do this. <laughs> and do this. Which means you can be. And if your joy is dependent on a song, and it means when she does this or do this, it means your joy in. <laughs> your joy ought to be in Christ. And because your joy is in Christ, you ought to be able to sing the song of the <laughs> In this letter, the letter of Paul to the Ephesian Christians concerns the universal church. Everybody who is saved is in the universal church. This letter to the Corinthian Christians involves the local church. He was talking to those who are members of the local church. And, and, and this church at Carmen was infested with many problems. This church at Carmen, Carmen. And then it popped sectarian division within the church. Some were saying, I'm part of Paul. And others said, no, I, I, I belong to Peter's group. Some of them said, I belong to Christ's group. Some of them said, I belong to Paul, Apollos, a great wisdom man. And Paul said, wait a minute, Christ is not divided. It, it had sectarian division. His ism in the Bible. And so the church had gone there with many, many problems. It was getting broken at the loss of neighbor. They went down to feet. They didn't do it in remembrance of Christ. They did it in order to escape the reality and the pressures of their present existence. And so then they used the lost supper service to get drunk, to escape realism. If, if they were having Problem with one another. They six shot of good ground. They were going to court with one another. When they should have been working matters out among themselves. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They had problems. The state of women in the church. Women were taking over as far as some of them. And, and, and they were speaking in tongues and whatever. And so there was some problem in the Corinthian church. Uh, that was doctrine on this street. Some were saying Christ means this, and somebody was saying Christ means in, in that. I was misunderstanding of spiritual gifts. They were doing like many today, pumping their little tongues, speaking gifts among everybody in them. They thought that they were more than the others because the others couldn't speak in tongues. 
tongue, but they speak in tongues. And so Paul had to put this thing in perspective to let them know that tongue speaking was the least of all the world. That's why when we look at that first Corinthians 12 chapter, we get to that last verse of the third chapter, we don't have to put a period there and talk the 13th chapter. He says, no, I show you a more excellent gift that can go on into the first verse of the 13th chapter where he said, now, love yeah. is the greatest of all gifts. Yeah. The greatest gift that a Christian possess is the gift of love. And Jesus said, that's the distinguishing mark of my followers because if you have loved one another, then the world will know that you are my disciple. Not speaking in tongues, not healing, not raising the dead. He said, but if you have loved one for the other, that's the greatest gift. All Christians are men, that is the gift of love. And so they have a problem with that. Right. Uh, a problem concerning the resurrection. Many of us are saying that the resurrection had passed. And it made it difficult for those who did not understand the doctrine of the resurrection to go on. So they were having problems. And then uh, Paul said, y'all have a whole lot of problems here. But what Paul uh, proposed to them was faith in God because he had them to know that God solved all problems. And I want to give it a little bit and say to you that no matter what your problem is, God saw not some, not more, not much, not many, not, not plenty. God saw all problems. All problems. Have you any mountain? You can't have any you can't walk, you can't walk. have you have any situation of addiction? You can have uh, have you have any difficult folks in your life? On your job? That gets on your nerve. Unfortunately, if that happens, because it means that you have turned your emotion over to other people. Nobody can control my emotion. Nobody can determine what I'm angry or glad. God solves all problems. Faith in God. Trust in God. Believe in God. Waiting on God will take care of it. And even if He doesn't move the mind, He'll yeah, give you strength. Yeah. Even if God doesn't change the situation, yeah. He'll fit you from the situation yeah. so that you'll come out of the situation. Shouting, praising, coming up with your hands up, telling everybody out that we can get a job for me in the night. But I waited and I waited and I held on and God had it for me. That's not an arrogant attitude, but it is a bold and believing attitude. That my God shall supply all of my needs. He's going to take care of me. He's going to do whatever needs to be done in order to bring me out on top. Glory, hallelujah. So in verse number 57, he teaches us that God has solved our difficulties. The only one who can solve the difficulty of living in a fallen world. We live in a fallen world. And then every time you watch the news, Dr. Like, I smile that you said, I couldn't believe that they would do that. I couldn't believe that you're in a fallen world. And no one has ever, as any of one has ever reached the peak of holiness and righteousness, no one has ever won completely to the death of evil. And so that all, but Paul said it wrong. He said they are the advantage of me. Right. By the time you think you have seen it all, that's just some more to see. By the time you think that folks have done your work again, there's always more work yes, that comes yes. on his heel. You hear what I'm saying? And so that you haven't seen as much trouble as you can see. You, you haven't experienced as much pain and suffering as you can experience. But I have to know, and the only reason why you have is because of the grace of God. It's because of the grace of God that somebody has not blown your brain up. It's because of the grace of God that some uh, mass you has come into the place where you are. We've been in the hall. 
that he is holy, that he is righteous, that he is steadfast, that God, God, God is unchanging. And God rules in this world. God is still in control. I don't care what ISIS does, God is in control. I don't care what the Supreme Court does, God is still in control. Well, why doesn't he not serve the thing, bro? God has his own time. The Bible says that God is not slack concerning his promise to us, but his long suffering. God is just trying to give us a lot of time and opportunity to come to that senses, to realize that the, the way that they are chosen for themselves is a way that leads to destruction. That's what the Lord says. The way of a man seems right in his own eyes, but the end is going to let destruction is going to let death in the end. We're going to have to pay the consequences of our choice. In the end. The chicken will come home the roof. In the end. Whatever been sown is going to be reaped. In the end. And so that that's why Jesus said that uh, this stone is broken. For I've taken this idea from Daniel, who saw him as a stone, he was out of the mountain. And Jesus said the stone is but one uh, that falls upon the stone, he shall be broken. But the one that the stone falls on shall be gone to power. And what he was simply saying was that uh, our lives outside of him are headed for destruction, sorrow, guilt, and unpleasantness. If we fall on him, he said we're going to be broke. And he'll put us back together the way we should be. He'll give us a loving mind. He'll give us a loving heart. he help us to see others as we see ourselves and to do unto others. Uh, we would have them to do unto us. We, we are full of life with that attitude that I'm not better than my brother or my sister. I'm in the same shape, in the same condition. Uh, as I need the grace of God, they need the grace. You might not give people a benefit of the doubt. No man left to his highest level. And maybe they should see this. Walk over you without speaking. Maybe whatever it is, but give them the benefit of the doubt. It may be a problem that she was facing or he was facing at home. And all the time to wonder, yes, he was down to R with a vegetable dog, but he was thinking about something else. Yeah. He was thinking about the hell that he kept from his job. He was thinking about the disappointment that I he so experienced. He was thinking about a child that just recently became pregnant. There might be some other reason why they passed over you without speaking. Besides, they just don't like you. My friend, they may have good reason not to like you. <laughs> but don't make that assumption. They're both the benefit of the doubt. You want them to give you You want your employee when you mess up on your job, to give you the benefit of the doubt. So Jesus said, as you treat others, that's the way you want to do it. You want to come to Jesus? Satan is a deceiver. He promised you what he can produce. <coughs> he promised that you go out and do this, you're going to find joy and happiness in life. And you're going to do it. Only to discover it brought more gifts in your life than what? Satan yeah. said, go and practice this. You can do that. And you won't have to worry too much about what I'm saying. You could be king of the mingle and you could be in control. And you're going to make that choice. Am I helping somebody? Somebody mind running right now. And know that their present condition of what they've been struggling and dealing with is a result of the choice that they made. That was a voice that said, don't do that. Don't say that. But it was too good. That man said, one way, two ways to look at a uh, Look at a uh, uh, rumor. Two ways. To listen to the, the, the gospel and, and to deal with gospel. He said, either it's not fit to be repeated, or it's too good to keep. <laughs> but I don't know if I'm all about this, but we got 
no, 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 We are all in the same boat. And if we be in the same boat, we mean that we need the grace of God. We need, we need God's mercy to deal with us. If it had not been for the mercy of God, if it had not been for the grace of God, if it had not been for God, somebody said, look at me, I'm my fault. But if it had not been for God, look at all my fault. And then my soul. The Lord said, pray that he needs some help. Ferdinand needs some help. Do you see a mess that Ferdinand is making out of his life? Ferdinand needs some help. He needs deliverance. And thank God Jesus came. And he shed his blood. The blood of Jesus. Soothe my doctor. The blood of Jesus. Give him that brand new start. The blood of Jesus. We've been given victory through Jesus. This victory is over death. We don't have to fear death anymore. Because those who are in Christ, who die in the Lord, and they have rest from their labor, their good works, those who die in the Lord, they may be absent from the body, but they are present with the Lord. We don't have to fear death. Death, death has cut down so many in the prime of their life. Death has put his grim hand on the rich as well as the poor. The Lord, as well as the own Lord. Yeah. Yeah. That has uh, uh, contributed to so much sorrow, so much pain. Yeah. Death has been defeated. And because Jesus lived, yeah. He said, uh, You shall live all. Yeah. Isn't it wonderful? Yeah. We shall rise again. Yeah. yeah. Uh, that's victory. Now let's look at the source of victory. Thanks be to God. God is the one who gives us the victory. Isn't it wonderful? There are a lot of stuff in life that you might, might want, but you can't pay for. But this victory, you want it, don't you? You want victory over the flesh, victory over the devil. You want victory over your circumstances, victory over the ill treatment of others. You want it, don't you? But isn't it wonderful that you don't have to pay for it? It's wonderful that God has not placed uh, the, 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 the responsibility of a suffering uh, of this, this victory eh, on how much you learn, where you went to school, where you live. God said, I'll give you the victory. What if I get the victory? It's come by the cross. Stop by the cross and see my son dying in your place. Acknowledge him as your personal sin. Ask him to come into your heart. If you do that, that's all I need. You give me the victory. Yes. Yeah. Jesus is a gift. Salvation is a gift. Holy Spirit is a gift. Peace is a gift. Joy is a gift. Power for living is a gift. And to keep your head above the tongue and fall off, that's a gift. God has given you Jesus Christ. And he encompasses everything. You want joy? Get Jesus. Yeah. If you want satisfaction? Get Jesus. If you want meaning and purpose in life? Get Jesus. If you want help for the time? Get Jesus. If you want to hold on in the midst of troublesome situations? Get Jesus. When I say get Jesus, I mean yield to Him, learn His word, learn of His word, and allow His Spirit to guide and direct your life.
my milk stuff. Have you had your milk meat stuff? You see, it's because satisfaction and peace is not dependent upon how big and how much. It is dependent upon you. A little bit with Jesus is satisfied. A whole lot with Jesus is satisfied. You see, if you just got a little bit and you got Jesus, it opens the door for you to receive from those who have a whole lot. And so then, you don't envy those who have a whole lot because you have a little. And those who have a lot don't look contemptuously upon those who have lived. Because they recognize that when God kills that book, yeah. it's what happens for them. But then when he calls the cup to run over, it is to be given to that brother and that sister. They realize that God, God has blessed them with much so that they can help somebody to have a living. God, folks, you don't need as much as what you have. But all they need is a kind word. All they need is an encouraging word. All they need is you to hold that hand. All they need is for you to tell them that they can make it. You can make it. You made it, but they can make it as well. Because God is the same today that he was yesterday. He will be the same tomorrow. And God will take care. So we put that trust in him. Am I preaching to you this morning? Yes, that's the soul of victory is God. Now who's the medium of victory? God has given us the victory through the blessings, those special blessings come through Christ. Through him. He said, well, the man is a fellow boss. He breathed, he got jobs, he got houses, he got land. We, we, we talk about that common blessing that God gives to all. But I'm talking about these special blessings. The blessing of peace and strength. Blessing. Of contentment. Yeah. The blessing that comes to those who trust God. Those who trust God. When the stock market crack, and when they lose what they have, they don't lose their sense, their, their senses. They don't lose their mind because they know the Lord gives it and the Lord takes away. And they say, I'd rather have Jesus than how to the man. I'm just satisfied with whatever God has given me. They like to be contented. They're not envious of other people. They're not jealous of other folk. They're glad when other folk get blessed. And they say, even if God doesn't give them anything else, he has already given me enough for me to praise him all day long, for me to worship him all day long, for me to tell somebody how good God is. If God has been better to me, then I can be to myself. And let me correct that. You can't even be good to yourself except God give you the right mind to some understanding. Everything goes back to God. I'm helping somebody in this day. And so then if God has given us the blessing, how should we respond? We should respond with thankfulness and gratitude. Well, we can. God does not ask us to pay him that we did. He said in the song, if I was hungry, I wouldn't tell you. The writer says that the gold and the silver belong to him, the cows on the thousand hills belong to him, the world and they that dwell, that really belongs to God. Everything belongs to God. God made all of this and then he made man last on the sixth day. And one reason I believe he made man last is because if he made man on the third day or the second day, man, we're going to take credit for all the other stuff. <laughs> so I'm going to do all of this and then I'll bring him on the Because man got an evil problem. Oh, we're gonna be better than the other folks. You don't hear what I'm saying. That's why we go through this political stuff. Whatever it is, in case we go through it, which is necessary, but we go through it in a way we go through it because this kind of day declared that he has a better answer than the other. You know what I'm saying? But it's not only confined to political it's also in the religion. I can teach better than him. I can preach better than him. I, I can say that you didn't do well, do well with that song. But had I had them like, I'll tell you what, I would have ran back on this part. I would have run this. We always see ourselves. We can do better than him. I can't even say that. I can't preach that. I say better than other folks. Oh, why don't you try this? I can love better than other folks. I can do good. I can do good. I can have more pity on this one. I can spend more money on others. We don't get into 
Amen. Because that's all. I'm preaching from that perspective. I'll ask you, what is your Christianity called? Because Jesus is right. Because blessed Paul is in. Because John the Baptist is in. Because Peter to be crucified upside down. Because John to be born, let us say, in hot, boiling. Okay. What is your religion called to him? I shared to you, 20th century ago, 40 million Christians be killed all over the world. Many are dying right now in Uganda and other places. What is your Christianity called to you? I'd ask like you to go out and quote that. And I'd ask you to go get yourself in the world unnecessary. But, but it ought to be called to you something. 